in the mid to late 90s, uh, I got to do a lot of recreations for different stuff for uh, classic covers. It was always a drive of mine to want to sort of do a realistic painted interpretation of these things to make them sort of come across as maybe more photo real and therefore almost connecting with the way I felt about them when I first saw them as a kid because I was never recreating any of these images that I was indifferent to. I, I loved all of them. So when I wanted to do a recreation of the Flash comics cover from 1940, uh, there's something very striking about its sort of simple flat graphic of him running to the side. There's no depth of field really too much, even though the guys in front are shooting at him. There's a very flatness of his hand sort of catching the bullet and just, you know, there's some energy there, but it's a blunted energy because of the flatness of the perspective. I put a lot of thought and passion into wanting to get that to come across the way that it felt to me looking at it as a kid. Um, and again, I only saw shots of it that were reproduced at small size. It, but I got to do recreations of uh, Green Lantern number one from 1940, and uh, which itself was a Flash Gordon swipe um, from the comic strip in the 30s. And then uh, Adventure Comics, which premiered the first Legion of, of superheroes story with Superboy. Um, that's not necessarily a dramatically designed cover, but this is where I really thought I could prove Here's what lighting can do. I can take what seems like a such a simple uh, throwback kind of sci-fi costumes that would feel very whimsical and lighthearted, and with the right kind of lighting, with either heavy uh, top lighting to create intense cast shadows going down Superboy's figure, or under lighting, as I used on the Legion, where they're at these podiums, each one of them at a different thing where they're voting on whether or not to accept Superboy into their ranks as if they were going to turn him down. Um, you know, it, to me that was the fun of it, is to make it somehow feel like, oh, you don't really need to redesign these characters. They're cool enough as they were. And of course now they've been redesigned for the hundredth time in various ways. And you know, all those redesigns are many times unique and interesting, but often, uh, there's often some classic element that was you was special that was worth holding on to that often gets overlooked and i often feel like i like to move forward as opposed to rewriting the past there's a lot to embrace of the past for what it was use it and remind people of its inherent dignity but also show the perspective you can apply to it to show that you're you're reconsidering it in a thoughtful way. All three of these covers I did were for the comic book price guide, which comes out annually. And uh, what they did in a couple of years, they commissioned me back to back uh, with two covers each year so that you had these two variant editions you could buy of the same book. Same content, two different covers, twice the purchase. Um, and so I got to do that two years in a row. And the third year that they asked, I couldn't fit them into my schedule, and I, got, I missed I missed the chance to do a cover of the Marvel Comics Marvel family with Ms. Marvel and Captain Marvel and Marvel Boy, as I planned it. And the opposing cover would have been the DC Marvel family of the original Captain Marvel and Mary Marvel and Captain Marvel Jr. And I, I still regret that that was something I didn't drop everything to make happen. <laughs>